I wonder if you could compare and contrast cap and trade with your carbon tax thesis. I'm sorry, could, could you identify yourself to the Able Verity Exchange Institute. Yeah, so we've, we've stated a, a very high level here uh, about carbon tax, but there's lots of details about it. The important thing is, of course, a uniform price on carbon, that if you emit carbon, it's going to cost you X. And incidentally, uh, if you can sequester some carbon, you get, you get the X back. Now, how does that happen? Uh, the danger of a tax is that the minute it's called a tax, all of the special interests go to Washington and say, heavens no, we need a special exemption for this, we need a this for that, and so forth. Um, cap and so cap and trade in a tax from that point of view are the same. Uh, I, I think there is, a, I had a fun idea a while ago, which is property rights. The citizen has the right which he has to sell in order to get the carbon. So everybody gets like pollution rights? You have a pollution right, you have to sell. The, the advantage of that is it's the same way. It's a way of engineering what is the price of carbon. That, that way every voter has an incentive to say, no, I want this tax uniformly applied, no exceptions. Because the, the, the climate doesn't care who uh, sent the carbon out. If it's, you know, some politically favored person who admitted carbon or someone else, you know, it's, it's carbon's carbon. Uh, you know, so, so there are, you know, cap and trade has its problems, property rights have its problems, taxes have its problems. Uh, we've stayed at the high level, but that's not to say that there isn't a lot of implementation and, and considering the politics of keeping this thing going and not falling apart.